Well, I was born in Iran. I was uh, born in Tehran, and by ethnicity, I'm an Assyrian, and I'm a cradle Christian. Uh, I was baptized as a Catholic, and uh, when I was six years old, the 1979 revolution happened and changed our entire lives. The entire Christian community was shocked with, with how our lives changed. Uh, back in the 1980s, there were about 120, 130,000 Assyrian Christians there. Today, we have about 10,000 left. Do you believe that? Everyone has escaped. Uh, we were considered uh, as third and fourth class citizen. As a woman, I was a fourth class citizen. And um, I was told that I would burn in hell for my Christian name. You know, I remember there were so many times in school that I was cornered. And I was, uh, kids, my own age, would scream at me and tell me, say the verse, say the verse that would convert you to Islam. And I would, I was maybe 12, 11 years old, and I would refuse to do so. Because I knew, I knew by saying that one verse, I would renounce my Christ. And um, my father said, you know, this is not a country that I want my child to be raised in. You, as a woman, would not have... Uh, too many rights and our religious freedom is being impeded on and uh, I was smuggled out if I was caught I would be sent back to Iran and I God knows only God knows what would have happened so in Germany we um, sought religious asylum and we were blessed to be accepted to the United States I came here 24 years ago and um, I'm a humanitarian at heart I strive to live a Christ-centered life and when I see injustice, discrimination, and persecution around me, it is to me sinful if I don't stand united in solidarity with my people. And it is your duty, our duty, my duty, as a Christian, and Christ himself commanded to feed the hungry. Because at the end of the day, when we're blessed to stand in front of the Lord, he will be pleased with how we have lived our lives and how we've given back to his children. When America went to Iraq and the, the borders became vulnerable and Al-Qaeda found a safe haven in Iraq, my people started being massacred. They were uh, bombed when they were worshiping in church. Their stores were destroyed, their homes, Al-Qaeda would come in and just would slaughter the whole family simply because they were Christians. And in 2006, I started volunteering for Catholic Charities, mentoring young women who were coming from Iraq and helping them really connect to good networks here in the States, uh, helping them connect to churches and really help them rebuild their lives here. And um, one day I was at church and I approached Cardinal Francis George of Chicago and I said, what is the Catholic Church doing? What is the Christian world doing to address this dire, perilous situation of Christians of Iraq? And he said, um, come in for a meeting. I realized and they told me that this is your calling. You have to start an organization that raises awareness among Americans about who the Christians of Iraq are. Believe me when I tell you, when we started ministering in different churches and entities in America, people would come up to me and say, you know, we never knew there were Christians in Iraq. Where, where have these Christians been? And they had been slaughtered for centuries, especially starting 2003. So our mission is to educate Americans throughout the country about the plight of the Christians of Iraq. And we, send, we raise money and we send it for food, shelter and medicine. We are very well connected with people on the ground. We give to small Christian organizations because these smaller organizations, their overhead is low. They really turn that one dollar that we send to five dollars. And they do a lot of heavy lifting. We really, really try to support and we hold these people accountable, these organizations accountable to where is the money being spent? Who do you give it to? So we're because of our connections with people on the ground, um, we're able to do, through the Holy Spirit, we'll, it, we're able to do great work on the ground. The Christians are being persecuted today as they were 1400 years ago. The blueprint of what's happening today with the beheadings, with the crucifixions, burning down the churches, raping the nuns, kidnapping kids, this all had happened 1400 years ago. 
I want to take you back to 1914 through 1918. Many of you know of the Armenian Genocide. Two-thirds of the Assyrian Christians were also killed. My own great-grandfather died in a camp. My great-grandmother, two of her daughters were raped and killed by the Kurds. This is nothing new to my nation. But the difference is that today we have social media. Today, something happens on the other side of the world, we know immediately. And that's why knowledge bears responsibility. It's very important for the world to stand up in solidarity with the members of body of Christ. These are not people, just a number in, in a black hole called Iraq. They're, they're just like you and I. They really need our help. When ISIS rolled into town a few months ago, church bells started ringing, not because they were spreading the good news, not because they were asking people to come to church. They were ringing the bells for people to flee, to flee homes that they've worked for for so long to have, their farms, their stores, the land that they have called home for over 6,700 years. ISIS came in and gave three options, pay tax, called a tax called jizya, uh, convert to Islam, or die, or leave. Those who chose to leave, they fled with the clothes on their back. If they had phones, if they had fake jewelry, if they had jewelry, they were taken from them at the checkpoint. They were attacked while they were walking, or their cars were taken away from them. Those who chose to stay and refused to renounce Christ, they were beheaded, executed, women raped. These women are being sold for 300, 400, 500 dollars in sex slavery. The one thing that Christians in Iraq ask me to relay to the world is why is it that the Western church is silent? But above all, they say, we believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Sovereign Lord, and to the point of death even, we will not renounce Him. Just not long ago, four children outside Baghdad were beheaded when ISIS asked them to renounce Christ and to believe in Muhammad. Kids younger than 15, they said, we believe in Yeshua, Isho in Aramaic, Jesus and they brutally were murdered. What is their fault? So why are we silent today? You know, the world of uh, advocacy can be a really lonely world. A lot of us advocates work in silos. We don't know who's doing what, and uh, half of us don't know how to network and, and really build this infrastructure to, on a united front, to approach big world powers, uh, influential world powers, to make a difference in this troubled region uh, called the Middle East. Through the Iraqi Christian Relief Council's work with the persecuted, uh, we're blessed to be connected to Philo's project. What sets Philo's apart is that they're targeting the younger group, the younger crowd, who are on fire who are really Christian at heart and they really want to make a difference. And that's the segment of population that we were missing. And I'm very proud to be a part of uh, Philo's, Philo's project now and be a fellow for them and really serve them as we're working together. Uh, the Philo's project is an important entity which is going to nurture and really give the tools to the young leaders of tomorrow to understand culturally who the Middle Eastern Christians are, understand the this complicated mosaic called the Middle East and really help them understand what they can do, empower them, give them the tools to make a difference.